Stark State College Massage Therapy Lab Notes with Michael Vigila, Licensed Acupuncturist and Licensed Massage Therapist. First of all, you have to find the spine of the scapula. Remember, that comes out superiorly at an angle. So it comes out like this. And you, you should just be able to fall off the edge of that. So it's very easy to find. And then the upper trapezius is on top of the supraspinatus. So in order to treat it, you're going to have to go through the upper trapezius. So you are really treating two things at once. You're treating the upper trapezius, but if your intention is to get down below it into the supraspinatus. And it just covers that little fossa if you're not in your mind seeing the spine of the scapula, it doesn't look like anything. It just looks like, I don't know, I'm just on this no man's land of tissue here. But in my mind, and I, I feel it, I see and feel the spine of the scapula here. That's the landmark that tells me that that's the supraspinatus muscle. So I'm going to use my thumbs and glide deeply outward right along that spine. So, and you go out as far as you can, but then, then you hit the acromion and you hit the bone, and it doesn't do you any good to glide over that because that's not where it is anymore. It's now underneath that. So, two or three very firm strokes, and if you recall, this is in your basic massage routine, right? Mm -hmm. So how is this any different than the basic massage routine? Your focus is different now. You're paying attention to, are there any trigger points there? And then if you find one, is that a little tender there by any chance? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then when I find that trigger point, I'm going to sink in slowly and you'll tell me when to stop. So this is how it's different than your basic massage routine. But like I said, uh, I kind of built a lot of this into that routine so it wouldn't be a huge leap to go into specific therapy. Then once you've done this, is that easing at all? Okay, so that's not really easing, and that's okay. I, the truth is always good. Uh, the... Um, that means it was too much pressure there, that her muscle couldn't respond to that. So then I would glide through it a few times and come back to it. So that's all there is to treating that. Now if you want to be more specific, you can come out, and remember how I said you can cross fiber the attachment on the greater tubercle? So if I follow that out, here's the acromion, I fall off, then here's the attachment. And I don't know if you can pick up that little flip, mm -hmm. but that's the tendon. And cross-fibering tendons, just a little bit, is a good little piece of stimulation to them to relax. Now, you can also use, and this is not in the manual, you can also use the T-bar along this spine. Okay, so the T-bar is for getting up close to spines, so or the bevel-tipped T-bar is at any rate. So going along the, the spine of the scapula with the T-bar, and I'm doing the upper edge now for the supraspinatus, that can be very, very good, deep, specific therapy. And like I said, if somebody comes in with a major shoulder problem and you're going to spend an hour on it, you can do all this detail work. If you're just going to spend a little extra time, you probably don't have time for all this kind of detail work. But for the supraspinatus, the deep friction through the upper trap, treating trigger points, and cross-fibering the attachment. Now from there, you could go to the infraspinatus, and again, that was in your general massage routine, but in a very general way. We were just using our knuckles to glide through that and friction through that entire, all the muscles in the infraspinatus fossa. And that was kind of just generally also covering the teres major and minor, just a big, broad stroke through there. So how this is different is 
Now you're going to want to get more specific and you'll use your thumbs. So in the general routine you were using just the back of your hand. Now you're going to go segment by segment and glide through that entire infraspinous fossa with your thumbs and you may find a trigger point. I may have found one. Is that tender there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go ahead and treat that. And this is a place, by the way, where remember I showed you the flatter tipped T-bar? Uh, this is an area that can handle quite a bit of pressure. So you might even want to use a, a pressure bar here, but I'll just use my thumb. So say when here. Right there. Okay. And again, that's not a lot of pressure. And is that mm -hmm. starting to ease off? Okay, good. So, again, in your mind, if it's like if you're looking at the video and you just look at that, that looks like a patch of skin. That could be anywhere on the body. You don't see the definition of the scapula. You don't see uh, the inferior angle. But we know it's there. And so when you're working on people, you need to have a sense of, okay, there's the inferior angle. There's the spine. There's the medial border, and then picture that bone there and work on it. So I'm continuing to follow along the muscles through here. Now I'm on the lateral border almost. So here's the lateral border. And if you're not sure where it is, that's where your palpation skills come in. Start probing around. Where is the lateral border? Well, it's clear out here. Okay, so I know that Terry's major and minor are out there gliding through those, looking for trigger points, and treating them appropriately. And then again, you can use the T-bar underneath the spine of the scapula. But you really have to feel where it is, so you can feel that ridge. And there may be some people you can't feel it on, so don't do this. I mean, if, the, if there's too much extra tissue floating around and you're not feeling very clear landmarks, then just do the deep friction with your thumb and treat trigger points. That'll always be safe. But if you have somebody who has serious shoulder injuries, getting the trigger points out from underneath the spine uh, often makes a world of difference. Okay, any questions?